Hey y'all, Jonathan Joyner, Hunt the Front. Drive that race car you see right behind me. Usually I'm making videos showing you how our races went, uh, me and my brother Joseph, but today I'm gonna do something a little different. I just wanna talk to you about racing. I'm gonna talk specifically about a certain type of racing, the type of racing that all racers love doing the most, and the type of racing that all fans like seeing the most, and that's side-by-side -side racing. The thing about side-by-side -side racing, or the thing I've learned about it in years of racing, is that it isn't easy. It isn't easy to race side by side in tight with another racer and not wreck, especially on a tight racetrack like many of the tracks that I race on down here in Northwest Florida. So what I wanted to do is take and show you some video from Saturday night. Saturday night, my brother Joseph won the Crate Lake Model Feature Southern Raceway. I finished third. I ran second to Joseph for much of the race and there for a while, it looked like we were gonna complete the one-two sweep. But a caution came out with three laps remaining and we had a late race restart. Delaware double file restart. I lined up beside Bo Slay, another guy from down here in Northwest Florida. And last three laps, he got me. We raced side by side, real tight, bumped and scrubbed a little bit, but he beat me to the finish line. He ended up second and I was third. Now I've taken that video and I have watched it a lot over the past few days. I've analyzed it, tried to figure out what I could have done differently, what I could have done better, and maybe held Bo off. Um, and the thing I've come to realize is it's a good example of the way I race, looking at that video. The way I race, especially when I'm racing close with someone, and the way that I make sure that I race hard, but I don't wreck at the same time. So what I want to do is walk you through that video and show you five tips. Five things that I think maybe if, if every driver did a little bit better job of, myself included, that you could have a great side-by-side -side race and even on tight race tracks. So we're going to take a look at that video first and then I'm going to walk you through it and tell you those five tips. Take a look at this video from Saturday night. Even though I lost that spot, I fell back from second to third and, and ended up finishing third when I would have loved to have completed the sweep, one, two sweep with Joseph. Even though I fell back a spot there on, in that video, it still, to me, is a pretty good deal because me and Bo, we raced side by side, we didn't wreck, and we put on a good show for the fans. And the best thing about it is my car is sitting here behind me ready to go for next week if I ever get around to washing it. So let's talk about these things. I'm gonna take you back into that video Okay, and we're gonna go through it and we're gonna talk about it together and I'm gonna show you five things, five ways that I made sure when racing with Bo that we raced hard, but I didn't run into him and take us out. And a couple of things, disclaimers before we go into the video. First of all, I'm not telling you how to drive your race car. This isn't a how to drive your race car so you can race better. It's a how I drive my race car and how I avoid tearing it up each week. Next, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, I've made mistakes, I'll make mistakes, but I've learned a lot of this from trial and error and through the years, these are the things I've sort of figured out about racing in tight quarters with other drivers and not wrecking us. All right, y'all, this is the restart. This is the clip I just showed y'all. This is a restart with three laps remaining. You got Joseph out front. I'm on the outside there in the 56 car. I was running second with for the restart, chose the outside. That's Bo Slay in the two car below me. Uh, and I want to use this part of the clip to tell you about point one, and that is to give the other racer some room. Give the other guy some room to race. Notice how we're not crowding each other. We don't beat and bang coming to the start here. We'll talk about this in just a second. Get us over here to turn one, and I'll show you what I mean one more time. A little push right there probably cost me a little bit. All right, heading off into turn one here. Let's pause it right here and back it up a little bit. And let me reiterate point one to give the other guy some room. See right here. Now, I have a nose on him. I can cut across his hood and try to get to the bottom and pinch off his momentum. But if I do that, you know what's going to happen? We are probably going to wreck. So instead, rather than cutting across his hood, I give him some room to race. I go in a little higher, a little harder than I normally would, and I let him have the bottom part of that groove. So I leave him a little bit of room to race, and we're able to get on around here to one and two. All right, guys, our second point here is pretty simple. 
uh, but you'd be surprised at how many people, how many racers don't really understand it. The second point is this. Know the difference between wrecking someone and between rubbing someone. Know the difference between rubbing, nudging, bumping, whatever you want to call it, and wrecking. I want you to pay attention to this part of the video right here. We'll roll through it one time, and then we'll back it up. Bump, bump. Okay? Now, some people might would get angry about, you know, this nudge, this bump right here. Me, I don't, I mean, I'm in that outside car there, the 56, and obviously it, it was, you know, didn't really go the way I wanted, but at the same time, the guy below me, the two car, didn't wreck me, and that's the point I wanted to make here, is you can bump and you can nudge and rub, whatever you want to call it, without wrecking people. So know the difference. Notice he, he I am on the outside here, and I have the momentum. I'm probably going to pull ahead down the back straightaway, he gives me a little bump, gets my car upset, gets me out of my line a little bit to stop that from happening. But the thing is, he didn't wreck me, okay? All right, so now let's next talk about the third point, which is to make smart decisions. I want you to watch this uh, going into turn three right here one more time. Going into turn three, I left a little room, stayed up high instead of cutting down to the bottom. Back it up and let me show you what I'm talking about. And so right now I'm kind of I'm kind of out of shape a little bit. I'm up higher than I want to be and I have a decision to make. Do I want to cut down to the bottom of the corner or at least down in the groove? Look where Joseph is all the way to the left. Do I want to get down there in the groove or do I want to maintain, stay up where I am and uh, stay in the groove I'm in, the high groove? So I had that split second, I mean milliseconds where I thought of, you know, I don't even know if the thought about it's the word, but it crossed my mind to turn to the bottom and I didn't. I stayed in my groove, and I drove into the corner right here in the top like I am right now. And I think, honestly, if I had cut down right there, I do believe I would have cut across his nose. He'd have turned me right in front of the, the red car down there, and we'd all three would have piled up. So I think, you know, it did end up costing me. I hit the hole right there, kind of upset my car, and I slid a little. Um, and it cost me some time and, and allowed him to get on back back up beside me. But in the end, I think it saved, saved us all from wrecking. So my fourth point is to know it's pretty simple know when you have been beat know when you've given it your all and you just come up a little short uh things just didn't go your way or whatever the case may be and that is what happened right there i can go in here and charge the top and maybe try to drive up around him but that's probably not going to work if i do that chances are i'm going to slide off the top and lose even more spots might even get up there and spin out there's just not enough grip the other thing and i've seen a lot of people do this i've done to me quite a bit turn down into his right rear quarter and try to turn him up the track. Chances are you're not going to do anybody a bit of good. You're probably going to tear your nose off. He's got his car locked down on the bottom. He's probably not coming out of it. You turn into him, he's going to jam the brakes and you know try to keep the nose in the bottom from you turning him up, and it's probably going to do you more damage than him. So instead of doing either of those things, I try to try my best to kind of get the car turned, cut under him, get that drive down the, down the bank and, and cut underneath him here, and I'm doing a good job of it until right about there. Um, let the car kick out and, and break traction and, and lose momentum and he pulls ahead So fourth point know when you've been beaten. I mean they all we'd like to win them all like to win every side-by-side -side battle We're in but it just uh, doesn't always go our way We'll play it out here to the finish. This is the last lap as he uh, Does a good job of, of keeping the car in the groove. I set up high again here You're gonna try to cut under him But like I said, he does a good job of keeping it in the bottom and bring it on to the checkered flag. All right, guys, I brought you back into the shop here for my fifth point. My fifth point is this, pretty simple. Understand what you're racing for. And understand that what the difference is between being behind the guy and being ahead of that guy you're racing with. And if the difference isn't that much, does it really, is it really worth wrecking over? I'll give you an example. Me and Bo were racing for second and third the other night. Second paid $600. Third paid $500. I know, great payout for a weekly race. But the point I'm making is, that's a $100 difference, okay? Is it worth $100 to wreck and take us both out? It could be a, easily a $1,000 swing. Losing the $500 I was gonna get for third and tearing up $500 worth of parts. So my point is, a lot of times, it simply isn't worth it to tear up your race car. It's fun to race side by side and you wanna beat that guy, but you also wanna make sure that you don't cost yourself a lot of money because if you're anything like me, it takes a lot of time and effort to get the car to the track, and you, sometimes if you tear it up, you're not going to have the money to uh, to get it back to the next race. And then that also works both ways. If you're racing for $10,000, well, all bets are off, right? We all might drive a little differently if, if getting by the guy below you or getting by the guy beside you above you, it means a difference of five or $10,000. Uh, like I said, I'm not perfect. 
and I'm not telling you how to drive your race car, but you know, from years of experience, from, from trying to race and not tear things up, but also trying to win races, those are five things I've learned. I hope you enjoyed our video. I hope you um, subscribe to our channel right below this video. You can click sub subscribe. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. Also, leave us a comment. If there's a suggestion you have for racers or something I didn't mention, go ahead and let us know that in the comment below. Other than that, we'll see you at the track sometime, and uh, we appreciate you watching.